Welcome to the National Weather Service Billings Severe Weather Spotter Training. This presentation will provide an introduction ahead of the severe weather that occurs in southeastern Montana and northern Wyoming in the late spring, early summer. First, it might be best to know a little about our office. NWS Billings moved from its airport location to the West End back in 1995. NWS Billings is one of 122 offices located throughout the United States. Official records have been kept since 1934. Our office is staffed 24-7, 365 days a year with at least two of our 13 meteorologists on at all times. Our forecast area covers 16 counties in southeastern Montana along with Sheridan County in northern Wyoming. This is equal to approximately 41,149 square miles of coverage, which is roughly half the size of South Dakota or about the size of Pennsylvania. Our office serves about 275,000 people with 110,000 within Billings alone. This presentation and those to follow are tailored towards those who want to become a spotter for our office or are looking to refresh their knowledge. Our spotters, listed as the red dots on the map, consist of roughly 1,400 volunteers who are trained to identify and report severe storms as they occur. Occasionally, we will give our spotters calls when we are curious of what is happening within a storm, but haven't heard from anyone yet. But what does this mean to us to become a spotter? The number one mission of the National Weather Service is to protect life and property. The National Weather Service is the sole provider of watches and warnings for the entire United States. The information that you can provide us is known as the ground truth for what our meteorologists see on radar and or satellite so that we can issue the most accurate warnings. Our spotters are plotted on a map where we can compare spotter location with the storm location. This gives us the ability to see which spotters were impacted by the strongest part of the storm, allowing us to make contact with them for the ground truth. I'm guessing you're wondering what we use to identify whether a storm is severe or not. One way is by radar data, both reflectivity and velocity. For reflectivity, the colors represent the strength of return energy to the radar expressed in values of decibels, which is also known as dBZ. When looking at the image in the top left corner, you can see a variety of different colors. The oranges and reds are the strongest and heaviest precipitation, while the blues and greens are much lighter. Velocity shows the motion of the storm. Red indicates away from the radar, while green is towards. It's easy to forget which velocity color represents a way in towards the radar. Think of it as, as brake lights on a car. The brake lights are red and are always in front of you, moving away. In the case above, which is from the 2010 Billings Father's Day tornado, we see high reflectivity values along with tight couplet of velocity data, which is the small areas of bright green next to bright red, which indicates a possible tornado. Spotters are so important to the National Weather Service because while we can see certain features aloft in a storm, we may not know what's going on at the ground, which is also known as ground truth. The further the distance away from the radar, the higher up the radar beam is seen. Having ground truth is a critical component for our meteorologists in our warning decision process. As previously mentioned, the radar beam increases in height the further away from the radar. This means that once we move approximately 100 miles away from the radar, we are only seeing the very tops of storms or even overtopping the storm. Places like Miles City and Broadus are in the edge of what we can see. Notice the area is not covered very well by radar, especially in the east. This is why we need spotters help. Radar data is not the only data we use though. We also use satellites to see cloud features. Currently, GOES 16 and 17 satellites were recently launched as part of a series of new satellites through 2036. These new satellites provide 16 different spectral bands that contain rapid updates. The satellite on the left shows visible data, while the image on the right shows infrared data. Infrared data is especially useful in the fact that when differentiating colors help identifying storms with the coldest tops. The yellows and oranges are the coldest tops, while the blues and greens are warmer. The colder the storm top, the stronger the storm can be. Here are a couple different satellite spectrums. The left shows blowing dust, which is indicated by pink, while the satellite on the right is a lightning mapper.
Understanding severe weather terminology is an important part of being prepared. One set of important terminology is knowing the difference between a watch and a warning. Watches are issued for a large area, over multi-county regions, to provide a heads up that conditions are favorable for severe weather to occur. Oftentimes, watches are issued before storms have even formed. Watches at this time of year are issued for severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, and floods. When a watch is issued, this is the time to think about where you would go whether it be your home or business, should threatening weather approach. The big difference between watches and warnings is that warnings are issued for smaller areas within the path of individual storms. These are storms that pose a threat to life and property, and the threat is imminent or already occurring. Now is the time to seek immediate shelter from the threat of tornadoes, large hail, damaging winds, or flooding, depending on that type of warning. For a severe thunderstorm warning to be issued, a storm needs to produce one or more of the following. Hail, one inch or larger in diameter, which is equivalent to the size of a quarter, a tornado or funnel cloud, or wind gust greater than 58 miles per hour. For the formation of thunderstorms, three ingredients are needed. The first is moisture, which can come from the Pacific Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, or monsoonal moisture, which comes from the southwest U.S. The second is instability, which is caused when warm air is near the surface and colder air is aloft, or an increase in low-level moisture. The third is lift, which can be created by mountains, fronts, or outflow boundaries. Should all of these come together just right into a higher magnitude, the threat of severe thunderstorms increases. In our region, severe thunderstorms occur more frequently over southeastern Montana and northern Wyoming which are more favorable areas for the ingredients of lift, instability, and moisture to come together. Official 2019 reports in Montana include four tornadoes, 230 high wind reports, and 298 hail reports. Wyoming had 22 tornadoes, 105 high wind reports, and 319 hail reports. Thanks for learning the basics of severe thunderstorms with us. Join us for our next video on how we can communicate information about severe thunderstorms with you. Stay safe, everyone.